Huck in Missouri. He's aboard here on our program. Huck, good afternoon. How are you today? What do you have for me? I'm pretty good. You know, I heard a rumor that you guys there at Mad Dog signed a big contract with NASCAR. So I'm looking forward to you doing a remote on Friday from the Pocono racetrack. <laughs> funny, fun. funny, funny. They got the wrong guy. That I could not do. I, I did my NASCAR penance when I was in Orlando, Florida for years. And running over to that uh, Daytona 500 to cover on the 24 hours of Le Mans and all that nonsense, uh, I cannot get into that. Anyway, you may continue. Go ahead. Fire away. Okay. My, my good buddy Tim in Atlanta, who I love, by the way, you know, we're talking about all-time great players, and he has to bring up Draymond Green. This is the same Tim in Atlanta that tells us every year Pittsburgh's going to win the Super Bowl and beat New England every year. So. Yeah, yeah listen, a, green, a, a, a lot of coaches love Green. Broadcasters love Green because Green does things that are selfless. He, you know, he, he can be a big factor in the game without having a score. And coaches love guys like that because, you know, uh, having a guy who can be a, have a major impact on a ball game by not putting a ball in the basket, I mean, that's the coaches love those kind of players. Uh, and that's why Green – now, listen, and that's why Kerr says great things about him and everything else. And I also think with so much attention that gets to the scorers, coaches go out of their way to praise people who don't score because normally they don't get a lot of accolades. So they go out of their way to tell you what, you know, Iquodala can do. Or they go out of their way to tell you what Green can do because they don't get a lot of attention from an offensive perspective. But I don't know how anybody can consider Jamon Green an all-time great when he cannot put the ball in a basket. Now, he gets his 10 points a game, uh, you know, and, you know, he averages 12 or 13 in the regular season. And those are not pressure points when he averages his 12 or 13, but he is not going to make you a pressure basket. And that's just all there is to it. He's not going to shoot threes well. He's got no mid-range game. You know, he can go to the basket and he can not get an offensive rebound, but he's just not a good enough offensive player. And I cannot put an offensive player on that level in the Hall of Fame myself. I can't do that. Go ahead. Next. Well, you know me. I can't stand Draymond Green. So, anyway. And he's also LeBron, and he's, and he's, and he's tough to root for. I agree with you on that. Tough to root for. Go ahead. As far as LeBron James, I don't give LeBron as much credit as most people for going to the finals eight straight years. I, the Eastern Conference, I'm sorry, for the last 10, 15 years, has been just god-awful. And he's handpicked his teams. You know, I'd, listen, I'm not a LeBron guy. He's a great player, okay? I got to give him his due. I mean, you, I think he's the second greatest player of all time as well. I do. But, you know, let's be honest. I don't give him much credit for, for winning the championship with the Heat. I mean, he took the easy way out. And you think about it. If he's the second greatest player in the world, which, you know, I, I'll give him that. He, this will be the 11th season he's played with Cleveland, and he's delivered one championship. The second greatest player in the world has delivered one championship in 11 years. I have a hard time with that. that. That's tough. That's tough for me. He's going to be, and he's going to be three and six in the finals. I, that's, I can't get past that number. That's well, I mean, uh, you know, the the one championship that he let slip away was the one against the Mavericks. Uh, I mean, and good call, Hawk. That, that was not a title that involved the Cavs, but that's the one championship that he's. And the other ones you cannot blame him for. Obviously, three years ago he had the whole team hurt. Uh, last year they were not as good. Uh, the year that they played the Spurs, there's no chance you can sit there and say anything about that one. Um, you know, uh, he was uh, fortunate to beat uh, Oklahoma City was a good win. Uh, they were a young team, OKC, and he was fortunate, um, you know, and he got bailed out by Ray Allen because he would have been a GOAT in that game six if Ray Allen didn't make that three to tie the game because he was awful in the fourth quarter of that sixth game. But the title that LeBron let slip away is the one against the Mavericks and Nowitzki and Jason Kidd. I mean, that is one he should never have lost. And he's got to take hits for that. Now, I mean, he doesn't take hits forever. But if you are ranking him with the some of the all-time, you know, with the greatest player of history of the sport and Jordan, he never had a finals like that. Now, Jordan was fortunate. You know, there weren't a lot of great, you know, the Knicks were never an all-time great team. Indiana wasn't an all-time great team. Nor is Phoenix, nor is Portland, and nor is Utah. I mean, he never went out there and beat an all-time great team. So you can go with him, too, from that perspective. You know, he beat a lot of pretty good teams, but he never beat an all-time great team. Uh, Joe in Kentucky, he's aboard. He's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Joe, good afternoon. How are you today? What do you have? I'm good, dog. Yeah, first of all, about LeBron, listen, all these talk goes away if he wins this one. 
Oh, I, I agree with that. To, yeah. But if he were I to agree. win this, all of this talk goes away. Well, I don't know Great what talk player. there. I, you know, I don't know what talk there is, Joe. I mean, you know, I, I, if you want to say that he's elevated to over Jordan if he wins his championship, you probably could say no. that. But it's not like we're ranking LeBron no. as the 20th best player of all time. I mean, we got him at number two. No, no, Whatever I, does I, it want to be? I agree. Be? Just, just, you know, bringing a championship back to Cleveland. You know, beating the conference finals this many times and not bringing, you know, or the finals this many times and not bringing home a championship. All that talk goes away. Well, that I agree uh, but, because this would be an inc- this would be an incredible win if he won this series. This would be an incredible. Absolutely. Win. Go ahead. Absolutely, I agree. Well, listen, I I, I have one bone picked with you. I, I don't understand this immediate brush aside of Shaquille O'Neal. You know, in the top ten, top five greatest players of all time by you. And your excuse is that he didn't play against any centers. Right. So who did Wilt play against in his day? Well, Russell. You know, who, who competed against Wilt Chamberlain? Well, Russell. Well, Chamber- and, Ka- and, Ka- and Kareem. Uh, that wasn't his whole career, though. No, nah, four years with Kareem, and and ten years with Russell. I mean, Not that, know, I mean, I, 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 I you know, there's a, I mean, you know, he dominated just as much as Wilt did. In his day, Shaquille O'Neal dominated. And, and what great center did? That. And what great center did he go up against? <laughs> he went up against. Talk. He went it up against. The, well, laugh. he went up. He went up against a good call, Joe. He went up against Elijah one one year and he got swept. What great center? Ewing. All right. He had his moments against Ewing. The Chicago never had a center. You know what? Chris Webber. I mean, the, the Jared Collins of the Nets, Rick Smiths. I mean, wh- who's a good player, but not a great player. Will went up against them. The center in those days, you know, uh, look at all those, you know, Thurman. Lit- you know, there's a lot of centers in those days uh, in the six. You know, Willis. You know, there's a lot of guys. And plus, he had Kareem and Russell. That's all you need to know. We take a timeout. We come right back here on Mad Dog Unleashed. The NBA Finals are here.